Salutations, Celestial Sightseers. I'm David Fuller. Welcome to Eyes on the Sky. What's up this week? Starting on Monday, let's get acquainted with a larger feature on the moon. Mare Nubium is the dark section in the southern section of the lunar surface near the Terminator. Bullialdus is the prominent one here. This is a 59 kilometers across crater. Look for the central peaks, terraced walls, and interesting radial pattern surrounding the area outside the impact. From there, look a bit to the west. There's the rather jagged looking walls of slightly smaller Agatharchides, named for a Greek geographer in the 2nd century BC. This is a crater that flooded with lava to create a smoother looking floor, but left some of the peaks around parts of the perimeter. Use high magnification and wait for periods of clarity. See if you can spot the small craterlet on the western wall. An evening later provides a nice view of Mare Huborum with the large Gassendi on the northern rim, which is punctuated by the smaller crater Gassendi A. On the southern side, things get even more interesting. The brightest and easiest to see is perhaps the 45 kilometers Vitello, but it gets rather strange towards the west. The very flooded and seemingly half-erased crater Lee is immediately adjacent to Vitello. This area almost appears as an extension of Mare Humorum. Then to the northwest is Doppelmayr. This may appear as just part of a crescent. The full crater is clearly flooded over, almost entirely. See how much of this you can spot on Tuesday. Wednesday has us looking south. While the enormous 227 kilometers walled plain of Schickard dominates the Terminator side of the moon, we'll look instead a bit inward. Notice that strange oblong shape? That would be Schiller, formed from an extremely oblique impact, generating a depression some 180 kilometers long, but just 70 kilometers wide. Definitely not your typical round crater. And between Schiller and Mare Humorum is a set of fascinating impacts. Look for Hainzel, along with its overlapping A and C craters, which make for an interesting region for perusal. And now this week's dark sky fact. The moon is full for most of us on the evening of July 12th in the more western hemisphere, and the light it produces is about 0.1 lux of light. Find an area that's free of other lights and find out how well you can see with that much illumination. That ought to be the standard we use for street lights, rather than the 30 to 100 times brighter light levels that typically produce, which causes glare, and due to light trespass, some sleep disorders too. On Thursday, we get a nice treat as a walled plain even larger than Schickard is in view thanks to some helpful lunar libration. Look for the 303 kilometers diameter Bailey at the edge of the moon. That's 188 miles across. There are multiple smaller craters within this plain, and several of them are quite large in and of themselves. Juxtapose them with the three similarly sized craters to the north and east, Zucchius, Bettinus, and Kircher. Each of these are from 65 to 70 kilometers in diameter. Now let's wind a path of craters from Clavius towards the moon's southern pole. Clavius is the large crater south of Tycho. It got sprayed with ejecta from Tycho's impactor. About an equal distance away, more towards the south, is Moritus. It should be obvious from the central peak in the middle. Immediately adjacent to it is the crater Short, and then south and just west of there are Newton and Newton A. Yes, these are named after the famous Isaac Newton. It might be easier to see a night later, but try on Saturday if you can. The crater Cabius, located right about here, is not on the southern pole, but is close to it. In September of 2009, the upper stage section of the rocket that brought the L-Cross lunar mission to the moon was allowed to impact into Cabius. The resulting plume was then to be sampled by the L-Cross spacecraft before it impacted the surface itself. The presence of water was indeed discovered due to the deep sections of Cabius remaining in perpetual shadow from the sun's light. Did you like this video? Please consider sharing these with others interested in the night sky so we can educate about what can be seen and how to reduce light pollution. If you'd like more videos like this, you can find the recent episodes at eyesonthesky.com in the videos tab and from the drop down menu. Or for last week's video about Messier 62 and Messier 6, click on the annotation here. Be sure to subscribe, follow, and like on social media sites. Eyes on the Sky is more than just weekly videos. Thanks for watching. Keep your eyes on the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can all see what's up. I'm David Fuller, wishing you clear and dark skies.